Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day for this New Year's Eve, the eve of the circumcision and name of Jesus, year of our Lord 2020. It is Thursday night. I do pray this finds you well this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. All right, let's light our Advent candles. I had to run out and get a couple of replacements this morning. I didn't put them in there yet. Wow. That's a big flame. Okay. Let's see. Okay, there we go. Without injury. This little pink one here. I got a replacement for that. Mine for this. Here too. It's got to make it until the sixth, the epiphany. There we go. Okay. Now today. We celebrate, well, it's New Year's Eve, which is not a church holiday, but what it is, it's a week after Christmas Eve, eight days, uh, tomorrow Christmas Day. It is the eve of the circumcision and name of Jesus. And they're reading from the Old Testament tonight was Numbers, which is what I'm going to read to you from Numbers chapter 6, and then a very brief reading from Luke where Jesus is given the name and circumcised on the eighth day of his life in our humanity, uh, fulfilling the covenant in our behalf. So I'm going to read from Numbers chapter 6, which was the Old Testament reading this evening. Or we had a church service at 630 this evening. Some of you I know watched it. Uh, a number of you were in attendance. Thank you for being there with me this evening. So this is Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel, and I will bless them. I mentioned in church tonight, and that, that is the word of the Lord, I mentioned in church tonight that you know names used to really mean something, something about who you were and what you did. And of course, Jesus' name means that. His, the way his mother would say his name was this, Yahshua. Yahshua. We, we through uh, sort of the tortured route that languages take through Latin and then through the Germanic languages, we end up with Jesus. But his mother and his friends and the apostles would have called him, among other things, Yahshua, that was his name, his given name, Yahshua. And it's a compound word, it's a name, Yah, short form for Yahweh. Shua, for uh, the Lord saves or the Lord is salvation. It's an indicator of who this person is. It's a very common, common name in, in the Hebrew world. It's my uh, youngest son's name, it's a beautiful name. But Jesus, this is what he's doing. He is the Lord, Yahweh. And he is salvation. He bears that personal name of God because he is God. He's God in our flesh. And then we hear in this, this is going back to the Old Testament. We hear it in the New Testament also. But we hear that that name is placed upon you through the life of the church. Moses is given the word of God. And he says, you're going to tell the priests this. So the people who are, the, the men who are Levites, who are Aaron and his sons, who are conducting the, the services and the sacrifices and saying the prayers, this is how God is going to bless the people. He's going to put his name on them through the mouths of the priests, through the mouth of your pastor in the life of the New Testament church. There's a connection there through Christ our Lord. And you are blessed because God puts his name on you. That's what you are. It's an indication of what you are in him. The Lord is salvation. You bear that name. You are saved. In the, in the Lutheran church, which I'm a pastor in, as most of you know, this is how the service ends. And this actually was something that Luther himself did. And you think, well, why the heck wasn't it there all along? That at the end of the divine service, so as tonight, when we received the Lord's Supper and we heard the word of God and received forgiveness for our many sins in Christ our Lord, the pastor, in this case me, 
stands before the people and I, and I, you know, assume this posture and make the sign of the cross and have the three fingers up. It's not required, but, you know, it's a symbol of the Holy Trinity. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And what it's a reminder of is we end the service that way and then the people say amen at the end of that. This is true. What we're, what we're saying as we say those things at the end is like, God, throughout this entire divine service, when I've heard the word proclaimed, like Aaron's um, sons and the priests would do, when I have received the sacraments as, as these ancient people did through the sacrificial system, you know, circumcision, things like that, and then um, the pronouncement of forgiveness that God is placing his name on me. He's placing Christ on me. I am dressed in Christ. I have Christ's name on me. That's, that's found in Revelation, not just in, in here in Numbers, so both ends of the Bible, more or less, that God places his name on you and you belong to him. And, and, and this is now what you are. You, you assume, if you will, that identity. You are a Christian. You are Christ. You belong to him. And, and now you are a little Christ out in the world, forgiven, an heir to everlasting life. As we face the new year, and this is what I said in church tonight, so if you're at church tonight, well, you're just going to bear with me. We do not know what this year is going to bring. We, you know, we're praying for an, end, for an end of the pandemic and, and you know, a return to normal. I do pray that we'd repent. There's a lot of things that were normal before that we don't really need to do anymore. You know, the stuff we, we watch, the stuff we listen to, the... Uh, stuff we export to the world around us and call it art or entertainment or whatever, you know, and what we tolerate in our own lives. You know, there's a lot of room for repentance in our lives. And so I don't know, you know, if God is finished with this process of calling us to repentance. I'm not God, you know, but this I do know, that he, regardless of the suffering that we face, um, if, if it ends, if it doesn't end, uh, regardless of, of what happens to us in this life, he has placed his name on us. That Jesus bears, you know, Yahshua. He is salvation. He's given the name as he's circumcised and begins to fill the law on our behalf. That we bear his name in everything he did, from his perfect life, fulfilling the law, his death on our behalf, his resurrection is all given to us, and this is what we are. That's what we cling to, not knowing what this new year will bring. We do pray it'll be better, but who knows? Who knows? This we know, you know, that the Lord has blessed us. All right. Let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray your blessing upon us as this year comes to an end and as we face a new year, that you'd bless your people in, in the face of so much uncertainty, that you'd keep us ever mindful of your victory over sin and death, victory that is now ours uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Bless our, our loved ones who are traveling, grant them safe travel and a safe arrival to their destinations, especially as inclement weather is coming our way and uh, uh, is forecasted to hit our area tomorrow. I pray that you keep uh, those who must travel safe and be with those whose duty it is to work out of doors, um, that you would keep them safe as well. Be with those who are crying out for healing, especially this night. We pray for Tiffany and Joanne. We do ask you, according to your gracious will, to place your healing hand upon them and all who are crying out to you. 
be with the nurses and doctors who are caring for them, that they might be your instruments for their well-being. We do ask you, according to your gracious will, that you fill us uh, by your Spirit, that we may uh, see your truths and repent of our many sins, and uh, be your salt and, uh, and light in a nation and a community that uh, also needs to repent of its many sins, that we might boldly proclaim the word of Christ. We do ask you to uh, bless us throughout this upcoming year, that uh, you'd spare us, uh, but that you'd keep us steadfast until that day we stand before your throne. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands upon myself, my body, soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to sing, and this was our closing hymn for church tonight, and it's just a beautiful hymn. It's a hymn by Philip Melanchthon. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, with us abide. Hymn number 585, and I'll sing one, maybe two stanzas of it. Lord Jesus Christ, with us abide. For round us falls the heaving tide. Oh, let your word, that saving light, Shine forth undimmed into the night. In these last days of great distress, Grant us, dear Lord, true steadfastness, that we keep pure till life is spent, your holy word and sacrament. To hope grow dim, to hearts turned cold, speak tongues of fire and make us bold, to shine your word of saving grace, into each dark and loveless place. May glorious truths that we have heard, the bright sword of your mighty word, spurn Satan that your church be strong, bold unified in act and song. Okay, that's stanzas one through four of six of hymn number 585, Lord Jesus Christ with us abide. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I bid you a blessed and a happy new year and that you be safe this evening. And by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.